Hey, Pro Life Jen. Uh, thanks for joining me on this episode of for How to Win This Week. I have some thoughts that I don't know if I've expressed fully yet on the Explicitly Pro Life podcast, which is why I want to talk about this today. Chemical abortion is now the fastest growing type of abortion for women to obtain in the United States. And the goal of the abortion industry is to make it replace all other abortions. Look, we're really excited about the Dobbs v. Jackson case that the Supreme Court's going to be hearing, which could um, you know, ban all second and third trimester abortions. It could go as far as reverse row completely. I don't know if that will happen. That's my hope, um, but I'm not working towards that. Like I'm not assuming that, let's put it that way. Um, but we get, we're getting really excited about banning second and third trimester abortions. I think it's very important because we can clearly show with ultrasound technology, 3D, 4D ultrasound, the humanity of the child. But this is my fear, is that we spend all of this time working to ban second and third trimester abortions, which from Guttmacher, which we have no national abortion reporting law, which is a disaster, by the way, don't get me started on that, it, about you know, 12,000 abortions a year come in the second and third trimester. So we absolutely need to ban those abortions. So that means the vast, vast majority of all abortions are in the first trimester. So the abortion lobby knows the writing is on the wall for second and third trimester. Like science continues to prove how barbaric and gross, destructive and evil abortion is. I mean, I can throw in like 10 more adjectives here, right? Um, so they know the writing is on the wall for that. They also know, and we know from, you know, David B. Ray, the you know, founder of 40 Days for Life and uh, Laura Mazika, executive director of Sidewalk Advocates, that the presence in front of abortion facilities from the pro-life movement in recent years dramatically um, reduces the amount of women who will go into those abortion facilities. Abortion facilities shut down. They operate, up, um, some estimates are that they operate with like a 10 to 13 percent um, profit margin. That's why a lot of Planned Parenthoods will actually operate in the red because they're government subsidized. But if they're part of like, that's why they have this affiliate network. So that way they can fund and keep uh, abortion facilities or other, you know, their non-abortion uh, satellite clinics operating, even if they're not making a profit, as long as the overall affiliates making a profit. But because they know anytime people are from that abortion facility, women are going to call, cancel their appointment, just not show up, keep driving. So they see the writings on the wall for these brick and mortar abortion facilities too. So they're already like down here. We're like excited for Dobbs and, you know, stopping second and third trimester abortions, but they've already prepared for this. Their solution is we're just going to make all abortions, chemical abortions in Sweden. I think today it's like 90 90% 90% of all abortions are chemical abortions in India. It's over 70% are chemical abortions. This is great for them. It's it's a win-win-win for them. They don't have to have independent freestanding clinics that get picketed. It's easier for them uh, to convince doctors to commit chemical abortions because you're not actively going in and like tearing apart limbs or sucking out baby. A woman's taking a pill. You're just giving her the pill to kill her child. And then you're just confirming that her child has been killed. They don't have to pay for the disposal of the child because they tell her just to sit on the toilet and don't flush. So this is a great thing for them, that we're all focused on banning second and third trimester abortions. And what they've been doing is dramatically expanding the market share of chemical abortions in our country today. It's about 45%. Their goal is for it to be vast majority of our chemical abortions. Now, the abortion industry has used covid and said, well, if women can't go into an abortion facility to get an abortion because COVID, you know, they're going to kill their child, but it's too dangerous for her to go into an abortion facility because she could get COVID. They've been using COVID to say, we'll just mail her the abortion pill. We'll just mail it to her. In fact, there's been a national study going on with Planned Parenthood, a government entity who's been operating against the FDA guidelines on chemical abortion giving women in Montana access to the chemical abortion pill via webcam, not even having to confirm that she's pregnant, to even get a blood test to confirm she's pregnant, which we've talked about before in Explicitly Pro-Life podcast, which is extremely dangerous for her and can lead to her death. It, it can lead to her infertility. We just found out the wannabe state of Washington, D.C., 
their Planned Parenthood has actually already started to debut this program where they are shipping out abortion pills to women in D.C., Virginia and Maryland. No one's even regulating this or, or saying, hey, you can't do this. This is against the law. You're not even confirming a woman's pregnant. Now they will say you have to take a pregnancy test after you ingest these painful drugs that can kill you just to make sure you've actually had an abortion. The baby's really, really dead. That's what they're doing. Oh, and by the way, if uh, any pro-life entity dares to have an ad about the chemical uh, abortion reversal process, abortionpillreversal.com, which about, I think the statistic is, I'm going to look it up right now. So I don't get lead you wrong. I think it's over 50% um, of abort of children who are being aborted using chemical abortion pills can be saved if their mother acts. Yeah. 64 to 68% can be saved if she goes through the abortion pill reversal. It's abortionpillreversal.com. So the abortion industry is online advertising drugs that literally end life, but yet pro-life groups that have ads that say, hey, if you've taken the first pill, but you don't want to take the second one and you want to try to save the life of your child, Google's taking those ads down saying they're unscientific. My question is, why does the abortion lobby care? They've already got all of her money for the, the abortion. Why do you care? Why are you so insistent that her baby dies? It's and and these abortion pill reversal is not unscientific. This is these are board certified OBGYNs in good standing in their communities who practice medicine who are using a very commonly prescribed treatment to stop miscarriages. So yeah, chemical abortion. We have to be ready for this, guys. We have to be talking about chemical abortion, the dangers of chemical abortion, how equally wrong abortion in the first trimester is to abortion in the second and third trimester is. This is what we've been focusing on Students for Life with our Abortion Free Cities campaign, um, that we've got to keep talking and increase what we're saying about the dangers of chemical abortion, You know, amplifying our voices, getting that message out there, um, correcting misnomers, things when people think that the chemical abortion pill, RU46, is the same as the morning after pill. It is not the same thing. It's actually way more dangerous and 100% more deadly for the child every single time. Morning after pill could kill a child if conceptions occurred and that, and that new human life has made its way down in, and implanted in the mother's uterine lining. The abortion pill, RU46, is always deadly to a child because that is the intent is to always kill. So I think just keep this in your mind when we're talking in the pro-life movement in the next couple of months about the Dobbs v. Jackson case, and we're talking about banning second and third trimester abortions, um, don't get distracted because I guarantee you Planned Parenthood and the other side is not distracted and they're already working on the next step. 